What's up, guys? In today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the education that I have gained, the lessons I have learned along my journey with DTF. Um, I do wanna point out that um, certain things that you're gonna need um, to convert your printers. Um, First things first, I want to let you know I've converted to our 3000s, uh, uh, Stylus Pro 4900, Stylus Pro 4000, Epson Artisian 1430, 4XP 15000, um, a 3880, a shirt color P5000, and what else? that's it for right now and in converting all these printers um, while some are more accessible on the market than others I have found that there's a few issues you're gonna run into in your DTF printing so while the XP is really good for um, for finding in stores at this point we can all agree that it's not the easiest to convert due to the chipless firmware now um, in the future I'm sure they're going to have refillable cartridges with chips that are going to be auto reset it's just a matter of, um, of you know waiting the wait for someone to create that but in the meantime there isn't a such thing so the chipless firmware is what causes a lot of the errors that you're getting um, and even though um, I've reached out several times to the creators of the chipless firmware it seems like regardless even the newer people are still having the errors that um, that occur throughout the process of converting so um, I did want to point out that while you can find an XP anywhere um, there's just certain issues that arise with them if done correctly um, I again I ran two of them way back when once the acro rip issues were fixed it was running flawless um, my only issue was obviously I was testing out inks and going through different inks and learning my maintenance as I was going but I've really honed in on my nightly maintenance. I mean, it doesn't get any cleaner than what it is. I've honed in on my inks. I'm literally staying with the companies I do have. I'm no longer testing any more inks. Um, I'm not putting my printers through the stress of that. Um, I've found four great companies. So if one is out and the other isn't, then that's just what I'm going to go with. Um, don't forget to join my group as I'm constantly sharing, you know, the product I am washing, um, you know, and things like that. I let you know when it starts to come apart, those kind of things. Again, this is all my journey. And if I can save anyone the headaches that I've been through, I've cried, I've kicked, I've screamed. Um, I've been under a lot of pressure in the last two, two and a half months to three months. Um, you know there's kinks right um, so when you're converting a printer a few things you want to bear in mind you want to make sure that you have refillable cartridges for it and that they're auto reset if you have to do a chipless firmware some chipless firmwares run flawless while there's still others that have kinks in them but if you can't find refillable cartridges that are uh, that are auto reset chips or an ink chip resetter for the one-time chip that it does have then you're gonna have to have a chipless firmware so um, again if you're trying to avoid any of those two you want to make sure your chips on your ink cards your refillable ink cards are auto reset um, which means they will reset when you pull them out and put them back in when it's time to refill that's the easiest 
If you find a printer that requires chipless firmware, like I said, again, the XP having the most bugs while others run flawless with chipless firmware um, or a chip resetter. Some models don't have an ink chip resetter, not to be confused with the maintenance tank resetter. An ink chip resetter resets the chips that are on the ink cartridges. If you have that with a set of refill cartridges, you don't need a chipless firmware, okay? If you don't, then you need to make sure there's a chipless firmware. If not, every time your inks deplete, you'll have to buy new chips and replace them, or new cards with chips, whichever you prefer. Secondly, you want to make sure that there is a maintenance tank resetter, okay? Though the tanks are $10 each, it'll add up in the future. It's not like sublimation. I've had my workforce 7720 and for two years now, and I have not needed to change the, um, the maintenance tank at all for two years. So with DTF, that is not the case. Um, the XP fills between six and 10 cleanings. Um, that'll go by very, very fast. Um, the 3880s require, if you have um, an external resetter, it'll make you reset it every five to eight cleans. So you want to make sure that there's a chip resetter for your maintenance tank and that you can access the sideline if you're not wanting to clean out your cart your maintenance tank every time it's full then you got to make sure you can access the side of the printer where you can run an external printer pod okay there's those are your only two options there's a program called wick reset that you can pay per use and reset some models online not all of them have that. Not all of them have a maintenance tank resetter. So again, all these things you have to make sure are compatible with your model. Not just one, not just the other. Another thing, um, like I said, this is all to counter that I keep seeing, oh, as long as it's six colors, you can. No, if it's five colors, you can as long as you have the necessary things to take care of your maintenances and you want to have them prior to converting because when the time comes that you need to do the maintenance which i recommend nightly then you have all your supplies needed and your system is not sitting with dtf ink waiting on some supply okay lastly um i want to talk about is uh, I've talked about the chipless firmware, the ink chip resetters, maintenance tank resetters, but what's also important is a service program. You want to have a printer that is compatible with the service programs. Let me explain why. Every single component in here from the thing that sucks in the paper to the thing that selects the ink they all have a counter light. And the only way that it unlocks your printer once it reaches that counter light is you going on this service program and resetting, acting like you're changing out the piece and resetting the counters. Otherwise, your print head has a life and if you can't reset those counters, it is going to lock until you put in a new print head with a different serial on it or whatever piece you're putting in. So ultimately you want to make sure that there's a service program for it because you're going to quickly obtain those swipes, especially if you're selling transfers. Um, so this is a heads up for the XP. I've been on a search for one. I paid for one online that was um, $10 and I still haven't gotten my download. So definitely was just a scam. 
I, I'm sure. So for the XP, there isn't one. So when the print head life gets to the end, there is no resetting it. There is no clearing the counters, none of that. Um, and again, all these components inside the printer has a counter life. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that your printer has a service program. Um, it'll just make your life easier. Again, it'll end the printer's life. Once you reach those numbers, you'll get a, a fatal code and that's the end of it if you can't reset it. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of all of the picture and not just the first set of things that are very typical and very much in, in everyone's information of what you need. The service program is important, especially if you're gaining a used printer, um, depending on if there were a photographer or not. Uh, some of these printers we're converting are uh, photo, most of them are photo printers. Most of them come from those who were doing photography and printing and those kind of things. So um, the print swipes on that are gonna naturally be high unless you get lucky and got a new printer. So, I did want to point out that you want to have a service program. I can't stress that enough. Not only can you do an ink charge when you first go to convert it, you can do an ink discharge. So, when you know that your print heads are good to go, you can discharge the ink. When you're going to go on vacation, you can discharge the ink and put your cleaner carts in, especially the stationary carts that are so crazy to run through that long line that it has. Um, you can take out the carts, do a discharge, ink charge, and your maintenance is pretty much done it's for you to close it down before you leave. So again, um, these are things that in my journey, I'm glad I had access to every single one of the service programs for my printers, but the XP 15,000 does not have one. So be advised with that, that there's going to be a point in time that um, the counter is gonna be full and you're not gonna be able to do anything about that unless someone's already released it at that time. So another update with the 8550 or whatever it's called. Um, if you're not wanting to create an ink agitator, if you're not wanting to be hands-on with the maintenance tediously, it's not a printer that's easy. It's accessible, but it's not easy. So I'm not gonna touch base too much on that. Um, it, it was eco tanks were a problem when sublimation was coming out more uh depending on the ink they uh, it required more cleaning more nozzle cleanings than not so i can't imagine dtf um so i'm really not entertaining that unless i come across a printer for pennies i'm not wasting eight hundred dollars if you would like to waste eight hundred dollars you make your money have at it but hey update us give us the good the bad and the ugly don't just give us when it prints give us when you have to do the maintenance what your maintenances are how often your maintenance are update us tell us what's up because it's an expensive investment eight hundred dollars plus the software plus everything else i just don't think it's worth it but each to their own I kind of wanted to give an update on what was going on um, with the printers. Another thing is the PKMK switch on the R3000s. I've eliminated those three channels and I still have two whites and the rest of my colors. And on Acker Rip, you can just shut it down. And I have no drips, no leaks, no issues. Good to go. All right, guys, thanks for hearing me out. So far, that's been my journey. Look at my hands. I have gloves. They just get on my nerves. So I just like to have them on. But anyway, stay crafty. And guys, continue to push on. Continue to um, get through your trial and errors. I've learned lots of lessons. 
But I tell you what, when I wake up in the morning, I'm printing. So it is all worth it in the long run. Stick with it. You're going to learn what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and what to look for. Most importantly, keep testing. See ya.